Hi, since we were done modeling the brake disc in the last lesson, let's start with the hub, followed by the assembly with the bolted fasteners. In this lesson, we are going to design the hub and then bolt it with the disc with toolbox fasteners to create an assembly. Since we do not know the precise dimensions of the hub, let's start with modeling it in the assembly environment. This will tell us how it will look like with reference to the disc. So, open the disc part you made in lesson 3 and create an assembly document from it. If you do not have the source file, you can get it from the course page on Udemy or from our Patreon page. The mind map, however, can be accessed using the link in the description. Now, when you create the assembly document from the disk part, the disk will be pre-positioned in the parts to be imported and the new assembly document will open. You can also see in the status bar that you are now in the assembly environment. Simply double click in the graphics area to place the part at the origin. Note that you can see an F character preceding the part icon in the design tree. It simply shows that the part is fixed in space and you cannot move it. But the assembly primary planes do not coincide right now with the disk primary planes, which may increase some work in creating mates. It's always a good practice to center the main part of an assembly with the assembly origin. To do that, simply set the part to float by right clicking the part and selecting the option. Now you can freely move the part in space. Now control select the assembly front plane and the part front plane and select the coincident option from the shortcut menu. In this way, you can quickly add mate even without bringing the mate's property manager. Do the same for right and the top plane. Now again, the part is fully defined and cannot be moved in the space, which you can also confirm in the status bar. Now we are going to open a new part right inside the assembly environment and edit it here. To do that, go to the assembly command manager and select new part. Once you do that, SOLIDWORKS will ask you to choose a plane on which to start the sketch, which will be the first sketch of the new part. This plane also becomes the front plane of the new part. Now, if you do not choose a plane and hit escape, you will not enter into the sketch but you will still be inside the new part, which you can confirm from the status bar which shows that you are editing a part. You can also check the design tree which pops up a new part in a different color, depending on the theme you have chosen for SOLIDWORKS. Here, in my case, it is mint colored. You can also see the command manager which shows you that you are in the edit component mode as against the edit assembly mode. We will also switch off external references which means no permanent external relation will be added between the hub and the disk. This allows us to use the disk dimension to model the new part and still not affect the new part in case the disk changes. This helps avoid some very complicated errors in very large assemblies. There is also one more option which is worth mentioning here. There is something called as the assembly transparency which makes all other parts in the assembly transparent while you are editing the part in the assembly environment. It reminds you that you are in the edit part mode. It can also make selections easier in some cases. But you should turn it off unless you can't help it since it seriously bogs down your system. Now let's start a sketch and come normal to the sketch plane because it is far better to edit the sketch in that way. Also, note that in most cases, snapping will only work when you are normal to the sketch plane. Now, simply choose the line tool and start drawing the shape which will generate the desired geometry, keeping in mind that you are making a thing revolve. Also, add an axis about which your sketch will revolve. Make sure you constrain all entities and fully define the sketch. Now, let's create a thin revolve which will allow us to generate a revolve geometry without a closed sketch. It saves us a lot of time and effort. Rotate it 360 degrees and exit. Now that we have collected the overall dimension data, our purpose of modeling in the assembly environment is satisfied. So let's switch to part environment since some of the things misbehave here, especially with the selections. So simply exit the part and open it in a new window. Now let's create the holes in the hub for it to connect to the wheel. Open a sketch on the plane and draw the construction line to help center the circle between the inside and the outside edge. Then create the circle and pattern it to create 5 holes, equally spaced in this case. The dimension is not important since these are only used for positioning. Now let's use the hole wizard to create M10 holes and position these using the sketch just created. Now 
Let's create the holes to bolt the hub to the disc. This is where working in the assembly environment really pays off. You might have noticed that we need to create the holes on the hub which matches exactly in size and position to the ones on the disc. This is where we use external referencing. By using this approach, the whole size and positions on the hub will adjust should these change on the disc. But we should only add external references if these are justified since unnecessary and redundant relation will only make it difficult to troubleshoot any error should it arise. But first, we must align the disc with the hub as it would be practically. To do that, first off, remove the in-place mate, which gets created to constrain the new part once you start it in the assembly environment. Simply click on the part in the assembly mode which will display its mates and hit delete. Now the part is free to move in space. Now let's add a few mates to constrain the part. Now to add mates quickly, let's see a few shortcuts. You've already seen the control selecting method to add mates. Now if the two entities are easily visible, press the alt key on windows and drag the first entity onto the second one. From here you can select any type of mate, check the lock rotation option if you want to do that. Now, you cannot select the part and use the control drag method since it would simply copy the part selected. Now, let's use the coincident mate to constrain the axial movement. In this case, you cannot use the all drag method because of the accessibility issue. So, let's use the control select method. Select a round surface or edge or a temporary axis which is created with any round entity. Choose coincident mate. You can also hit the change direction icon if the orientation doesn't seem right. Click and drag the hub to confirm if you have fully locked that. Now, simply use the holes present on the disk to create the new holes. There is a shortcut to adding the new holes and fasteners at the same time, called the hole series. But it does not work in all cases, so we will cover that later on. So let's open a sketch on the hub plane and come normal to it. Now, we could convert just the sketch for position and use a new hole wizard but if we change the whole size on the disk, it will not update on the hub. So to do an intelligent design, let's convert the whole profile itself which will be produced on the disk. Since the holes are hidden behind the hub, simply make it transparent by selecting the appropriate display style here. Make sure to switch on the external referencing, otherwise all of these extra efforts will go in vain. Go to the Convert Entities tool and select the disk holes one by one. I'm afraid there is no shortcut here. Hit the green tick and see the new circles appear. These are your profile for the holes. Hit the extrude cut tool and use the through all condition. Ensure the desired results by coming normal to it. You can see a through aligned hole. Now that we are done creating both parts, let's join them using fasteners. To do that, you can add the toolbox from the task pane and look for the suitable fastener. You could drag the hole at the desired location and then simply copy it across all holes. But there is a shortcut called Smart Fasteners which detects what size will be needed based on the hole selected and adds bolt, washer and nuts. But again, it does not work in all cases and some patcher is often needed. Let's see the manual method now and we will see the Smart Fasteners in further lessons. Click on the toolbox icon and go to the NC metric folder and select M6 socket head cap screw. Drop it on the desired hole and it will predict what size might fit. You can change any parameter later on in the property manager. In this case, let's choose the length of the fastener to be 20 mm. After that, simply point where else you want to place the fastener. Now when the software displays the fastener mate, which is a combination of the concentric and coincident mate, simply click to place the fastener. By this technique, you can save time and effort which would have been wasted in creating two mates per fastener. Now, as you can see in the design tree, it is all crowded. So let's create a folder for these fasteners. So shift select the first and the last fastener to select all fasteners at once and right click to get the shortcut menu. When you hit the option create new folder, the software will add all the selected components to the new folder. You can now rename it to something which reflects the component inside. Alright guys, we have just created the hub and the disk assembly. In the next lesson we will create the caliber and then the brake pedal assembly. So don't forget to join us on Facebook and YouTube 
and partner with us on Patreon to share our work and revenue. Have a good one.